everybody um, from the nasty ram fam to yours Q fireworks. Happy New Year. Q fireworks uh we're sitting down here on new year's eve <laughs> waiting to give yep. you the word it's not okay we're just by watching the, balls drop Spoiler watching alert. balls drop by the fireplace man i can't believe twitter didn't make it to the new year <laughs> <laughs> what else what else happened right, in and december and I, I can't believe twitter made it <laughs> our twitter's gone what a resurgence who well, uh, this is Josh, and we are joined by the full crew. Who's here? This is Jake, Ryan, Jean, Dan, Matt. And uh, just a little bonus episode for you guys to start your new year off. A um, little peek behind the curtain. We're actually recording this the week before Thanksgiving because we are about to uh, lose a couple players for a short time. Ryan picking up some uh, his busy extra work time of the season, and John is about to go on... Baby daddy leave. Baby daddy leave, yep. We're very progressive. We grant yeah. paternity leave. We also don't pay anybody, which is also <laughs> makes extremely easy. Oh, I was actually <laughs> expecting that. <a flight. laughs> Wait, Ryan, are okay. you Santa Claus? Maybe. Ooh. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Explains a lot. That would explain. He's always gone around Christmas. Yeah. No, yeah. never seen yeah. him. Very busy. Damn. So we, uh, we kind of just want to have a sit down, a little chat, and... Uh, talk a little bit about Nastygram, about stuff we've done and more so stuff we want to do coming. So it's the start of a new year. So be our, uh, I guess, third year um, starting off in, uh, I think, would we launch May 2021? May, yeah. And uh, I think by the time this launches, Choose Your Own Adventure will have just wrapped. Hope you guys enjoyed the holiday special that we haven't recorded yet. <laughs> um, it's going to be amazing. I hope it's good. <laughs> hope it. Hope it actually got dropped. I never uh, saw that twist coming. <laughs> <laughs> so five full arcs and um, and a lot planned. And uh, we did not preface this a lot internally. Just kind of threw this out to the guys. We talked a little bit and um, kind of just talk about what you know how the podcast is going and shit that we want to do. So what up? What do you guys think? How's the, how's the podcast? It's good. It's going good. Ah, it's, it's, right. good. it's amazing. I usually Quite think frankly. of most episodes. <laughs> I mean, the only reason to do a podcast is to have other people tell you it's good. Right, right. hundred percent. Right. Validate me always. <laughs> and just listen back to see how funny you are. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's only really, you specifically. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I just fast forward through everyone else's podcast. I actually time cool. stamps of every time yep, you, yep. you talk. When I'm yeah. editing, I just mute everybody else's track. <laughs> there you just go. Listen to me. Brilliant. <laughs> it's so good. Explains That's the secret. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we have we have recorded a lot of stuff that hasn't made it to the podcast, and not because it's not good, but because we can. I mean, the main thing is we can only edit and put out so much. You know, an episode a week, to be honest, is is hard to keep up with. When you say we alone, it's the royal we. <laughs> <laughs> it's the royal we. Uh, Matt and I did a little uh, editing class Ooh. last night. Ooh. Yeah, so he might yeah, start boy. working. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that's uh, that we have out there. Matt, talk about your campaign. We've recorded, I think, is it uh, 454 episodes? <laughs> <laughs> it would sure as shit feel like it. Yeah, it's longer than Seinfeld. <laughs> I think uh, I think we're gonna be. I think we're at 38, 39, something like that. And this is your your very first. I mean, everybody's heard um, your choose your own adventure, but this was the first game you ever ran. And you decided to make it really simple and run a yeah. massive campaign. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, a lot of poor decisions were made. Uh, I didn't really realize how bad all of my decisions would be, but 39 oh, I thought you were talking about in. the players. I thought you were talking about the players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a lot of, mm-hmm. a lot yeah. of poor there's decisions a, there. Yeah. It was we, like, we, you know, 70 30. <laughs> poor um, Matt. Matt, yeah. it, it's, it's your first, first campaign. And then you just get this party of wackadoos. Yeah, like yeah. we we really don't usually go. You that played far a pretty over. normal. Yeah, you no, played a pretty normal. Mine, 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 mine,
Um, so yeah. And that started when I was out, uh, for maternity leave, still haven't gotten that paycheck. Maternity. Uh, Congrats. <laughs> I didn't realize. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a hyena. Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so that was, that was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. What's it called, Matt? Uh, bl- Bloodstone Dagger. Oh, it's already a podcast. Yeah. There you go. Uh, the Bloodstone <laughs> Dagger. Okay, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but see, uh, theirs goes dum to da dum to da dum, and ours goes. <laughs> um, so that's cool. What else have we recorded? We recorded a, a fate game. Yeah, Get Your Ass to Mars. Get, get Your Ass to Mars. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I, that was I, fun. I'd like to listen back and, and see if it's complete crap. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. reminds me of like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Fahrenheit 450, uh, 451. What's uh, Bradbury? Mm. It, it reminded me a lot of the Martian Chronicles. Yeah. It yeah. was kind of like that weird dystopian <clears throat> kind of excerpt. Yeah. It was fun because we used Fate Core, which John kind of turned us on to in the first place. And, uh, you know, the, the world building, we had like a two session world building thing, which was a blast. We kind of went into it with, hey, nothing. We were going to play blank. a kind of game. Yeah. What, what kind of game? And we went through the whole building process and then we played. I think it came out to like seven episodes. Something like that, yeah. I think um, we even came up with slang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we had a lot. Yeah, The whole cool. whiteboard was full of mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, it was a fun game. I think the 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 trappings or the kind of the things that we were a bit trepidatious about was how quick fate is to run um, and how easy it is for us to get our minds around how to play in, in the fate style. But I think in general, the game, like the the world and everything was, was really neat. And hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I really liked the collaborative world building yeah. on the spot. I think we came up with some cool stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to hear that. I want to hear it. It's, it's in the share drive, man. You cool. can listen to it. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to do it, man. Um, let's, so, Josh, what the hell? What's going on with Strahd? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, cock teasing Strahd over here for yeah. months. Yeah, I was a... We um again I made mean, fucking art for it. Come on, <laughs> we we kind of jump around um, with our recordings. Uh, we usually have enough in the bank to keep editing and releasing, and kind of playing a couple arcs at a time. Usually between schedules and whatever else. So we did start um, a Curse of Strahd game that uh, the plan is to start get back into in January. Um, it will be our first time, my first time ever running pre published material, short of like when we were 13 grabbing like an adventure module and fucking around. But um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. What we, we got, like we did again, same first or six or seven episodes. And, yeah. The mm-hmm. tutorial part. And yep. then um, a little bit in to afterwards. Yeah. I'm excited to see, um, to see how we handle that. It is a pretty sandboxy design. You guys are kind of just getting to the sandboxy kind of part of it. Um, so I think that could be fun. We haven't made, a set decision on whether or not like that's the next arc or at the time of this recording, hopefully by the time this releases, <laughs> we'll know. <laughs> we'll know. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's something that's already started. And then we got a couple more choose your own adventures in the bank. I think, yep. We got more choose your own adventures. And then we have another, a similar format um, of a choose your own adventure that I get, I feel like kind of was the brainchild between <laughs> we were uh, drunk. Matt and Jake. Yeah, we were drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so we up in Vermont, New Hampshire. Yeah. When do you guys talk about what, what that game could be like? Interesting, I guess, would probably be the, <laughs> and horrifying. What that, is it? It's a little close to home for that you, is, man. Yeah. Monster of the Week, mm-hmm. right? Monster of oh, the Week yeah. system. But what's the hook? Matt? Uh, so I believe it's we're going to be running a super elite kitchen that feeds only the wealthiest and most powerful. And uh, Santa Claus, do you have a fucking lollipop in your mouth right now? <laughs> wow, During a podcast? Bro. Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Russell over there. <laughs> I mean, he's got to get Russell the belly up. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. Uh, we're going to be running a restaurant for the uber powerful and wealthy serving them dishes unavailable to anybody from creatures that, well, that's a little to be determined. Serving up, serving up the monster of the week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's our sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. Boom. 
because <laughs> nobody knows about that system, so they're yeah. desperate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's yeah. Or I mean, could always get HelloFresh in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we okay with that? Get a discount on mine? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So Jake yeah. had the idea of kind of doing that in a similar vein to Choose Your Own Adventure, right? Yeah, I think we can we can have this kind of kitchen staff that we rotate in which um, members of the staff are going on the hunt that week. Uh, so anyone can run a game where they send people off to uh, harvest whatever monster is on the menu for that week. And the accoutrement. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. You need side dishes. This, <laughs> yeah. The system works so well for that. And just the, the genre, the monster of the week, like what it's based off, that kind of style that, you know, Buffy uh, or X-Files kind of, you know, uh, you know, again, they have a more, I think more Buffy. Um, yeah. Cause it, it's, I think it's a little more, this is a little more tongue in cheek, yeah. obviously. You're yeah. more proactive. Uh, you're going to get something yeah, as opposed yeah, to yeah. things happening to you. Yeah, but, yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> but it'd be fun. Cause it's, you know, it's a little bit of a lighter game. We do, I'd say the majority of our stuff is on the dark and heavy side. Yeah. So yeah. we'll do that as, as fill-ins on weeks when uh, one of us, uh, you know, can't make it. Um, we'll just have a couple of those kind of one night monster of the week games lined up. And then when we get a big enough catalog of them, we can drop them all like we do with choose your own adventure. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I like yeah. It. yeah. If they, yeah. if they sound good. <laughs> they, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. The little bit of a challenge will be, um, I don't think anyone besides me has, has run monster of the week, but it's, it's easy to learn. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've run Dungeon world, but it's yeah. similar. Yeah. You, similar you did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that'll, there'll be a little bit of a learning curve there, uh, as game masters, but it's, it's a very easy system. I think that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to trying that. I'm excited. I, I've really been enjoying the choose your own adventure games. I just love how m much we manage to pack into one night, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm kind of looking, I, you know, when, when we end up playing one, it's, it's fun. Uh, John ran the last one. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, we got to try out some new mechanics, right? What, what, what was that? Um, what was oh jeez, that was what was oh, that guy? initiative. Oh, the initiative. The the initiative. Oh no, change? like no. your your monsters oh. and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Sorry, <laughs> my brain is not working. Um, baby brain. So, yeah, I got I got baby brain. Um, the uh, so one of the guys that I follow a lot is Matt Coville on YouTube and and Twitch and all that, and he puts out a lot of good um, fifth edition supplements. One of them is he just coming out. And he's piecemealing it out called Flea Mortals, which is um, a better monster uh, manual, basically, uh, with more interesting monsters that have more interesting abilities. Um, so I tried to use a bunch of the ones from the playtest in that game, uh, in the Choose Your Adventure. And I think it turned out pretty well, the the um, the monster that they ended up fighting, because I, I for that game, I had to design three separate fights because there was three options. Um, and the one they f ended up fighting was, I felt, Pretty fun, pretty interesting. And I run. think the critique that we've had for fifth edition is that their monsters generally tend to be sponges, hit point, yeah, yeah. Hit point sponges. So having something that provides some depth to a creature and depth, therefore, to combat is is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. D and D combat can can get stale after a bunch of encounters, and you know, I've found running longer D and D games that I'm I'm looking for the more interesting monsters with cool actions and. Yeah, or just you know, modifying or them. making yeah. your own, you know, because y you get to the point where you're like, oh, this is this thing is kind of just the same as that other thing, except it hits a little harder and has more hit points, you yeah. know, like so. It's cool to have more options. It's cool to have like things like that that um, we don't know what it's gonna do. Right? <laughs> you know, that's kind of fun. Yeah, that's the other part. Hmm. Surprise. Yeah, um, yeah. You can you can like uh, it, it's nice to have, have be able to make your own uh, monster, but sometimes you just want to be able to drop in something that is also interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. and you don't have to think about it too much, and that definitely helps. Who, who else is going to run games this year? Yeah, twenty twenty three. We're in the middle of one of my choose your own adventures that oh, I need yeah. to finish. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, yep. But I'm definitely looking forward to running a, a, a couple other options. Anyone have any like games, campaign type game ideas? I got a couple ideas. I'm probably going to mull over while I'm holding a baby. Mm -hmm. Tease them out there. Um, so one of them is using, probably using Delta green, um, where, uh, it's nearish future where humanity has conquered at least a local space or lunar and maybe some parts of Mars, uh, and more of a mystery style game where 
an object enters the solar system and something happens. Expanse vibes. Ooh. Yep. Yep. Cool. I, I was thinking Star Trek one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. thinking interstellar. Lots of, <laughs> lots of slow building shots. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that works great in radio. I hear. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the other one was uh, retrofitting tachyon squadron, which we've played um, to run a uh, world war two American volunteer group um, flying tigers. World war two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I changed. Cool. so I was thinking about World War One, uh, flying aces. But um, one of the problems with World War One is there were no radios and no parachutes, so it's pretty difficult to do like role playing in in combat. Um, it's all it would all be meta discussions about what you're doing, and I kind of like that interpersonal discussion when you're like on the radio and asking for help or whatever. Yeah, so we played Tachyon Squadron a couple of years ago, and. We loved it. We're uh, blown away by yeah. it, its fighting system. There, it, I mean, there's not a lot of game systems out there that can really do like a dogfight. Um, you know, we did a, like a space game, right? And we were, mm-hmm. it was kind of like X-wing type fighter fighter uh, ships yeah. and snub fighters. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Um, we were very happy with it. I'm interested to see if we can make it work without um, visual representation. Sure. Yeah, that, that will that, be a little bit of a challenge. That's the thing. The it's the great. game itself require well requires a a ladder map basically of of energy mm-hmm. values. I think I'm going to change that into altitudes and make it a bit more easy to digest. Like. You're at nine thousand feet. Your opponent is at cool. six thousand feet, mm-hmm. and you have to jump on him. As opposed to saying you're at you're at levels nine and he's at level six, and maybe that's a bit more. Abstract. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. Good talk. And and also uh, for those who don't know, John actually has piloting experience. Yeah, so he and always, crashing experience. And crashing experience. <laughs> yeah. So we always he always he's drop, still here. So so drop spoiler alert. The you knowledge. Yeah. You're like Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah. Fly. Yes. <laughs> Land. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like Harrison Ford. Just yeah. like Harrison Ford. Except, <laughs> except he. Just landed like a fucking pro when his when his engine stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he do that on a, on a golf course? Yeah, he, yeah. He's also he, crashed. He munched it. So, yeah. so did John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he landed at an abandoned uh, yeah, airport. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how much better though, can you be? He landed. You yeah, said he landed. landed. He's good. No, 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 no. Harrison Ford yeah. crashed. He didn't did land. He? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. He, he bent some props. He bent some some metal on that one. Um, and I'm I'm planning out a vampire game. Boom. I think I've Love it. <laughs> hinted at that a little bit. Um, modern day, set in New England. I'm going to be a TikTok vampire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll, it'll, we haven't played vampires since like the early it's 2000s. Been, so I it'll can't be believe how long it's been. Very interesting to, to try to wrap my head around how modern technology affects Being vampire, a vampire and all that. Um, which is one of the main reasons I set my last game in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, last time I played Vampire, I still had my London Fog trench coat uh, hanging <laughs> up. <Ooh>. Outstanding. <laughs> um, I've got like four games I want to run. Four. <laughs> nice. Four? In addition to Strahd. Mm-hmm. Well, there's Strahd. Um, there's another game which we've already, at the at, as of this recording, done a session zero for, and we're planning to record while Ryan and Matt are out. You mean John? Yes. Bruh. What did I say? <laughs> I did it again. Oh, yeah. Did it again. Bruh. yeah. At least that won't be happening in the future can't, for a little can't while. Edit that one out. <laughs> well, John and Ryan are out. So it'll be um, Jake, Dan, and Matt joined by newcomer Devin, who behind the scenes has been running a game that we actually have recorded, which Jake and I have loved. Uh, it's Delta Green, which we've now mentioned. Um, John already mentioned it. But an, an amazing system and Devin uh, who I'd never played with before. He's a friend of mine, but he's an awesome storyteller. It'll be fun to have him at the table. Um, you guys uh, actually heard Devin in the, uh, the Halloween spooktacular. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I have a using that system uh, set in 1940 um, summer, fall 1940 in the U S uh, before the U S enters world war two, the um, players are playing a team of, uh, FBI agents, local law, and consultants that are investigating some crimes and mysteries in a small town with a research university. In some un-American activities. States, <laughs> New York. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. Um, that's kind of already in the works. And then I have a few others that are just ideas. The World War II bug. Um, but like years ago, that I've actually had that that game concept in my mind for a long time initially it was going to be set in the uk in a similar time frame um and now i have a different version of that game 
at some point I might want to play with like spycraft playing like yep. no shit like yeah you know uh mi6 precursor kind of dudes multinational team world war ii behind enemy stuff. lines yeah, whatever, yeah doing missions i have a DD game we've talked about for a long time um set in our homebrewed world which you guys have heard more about which is about a young nobleman uh going to a abandoned river valley that is his family's heritage that was abandoned after this event we've talked about called the awakening when shit went crazy and basically going back to sort of reclaim his family's lands with a small retinue and a very kind of cool sandboxy um, environment, which I think, you know, some of the things that we liked about empire's end, maybe there, obviously very, very different setting, but, and lastly, uh, and most recently I've been thinking about running star Wars again. I was about to say, uh, yeah. I feel like we've all got the Star Wars are, bug. After Andor. Yeah, watching Andor. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to run years behind everybody else, <laughs> so I've just gone into watching Mandalorian. Yeah, good enough. <laughs> um, but I want to run our, our bread and butter back when we played a lot of Star Wars. I want to run a, fringe, a yep. fringe game um, in set in Star Wars right around the same timeline as Empire's End, probably in that same world. <laughs> Maybe some overlap of characters, but definitely not like a sequel. You know, yeah. it's not going to be in the VRX system. Um, I don't know if we're going to use the same Star Wars system, use Summon Villainy. We've talked, uh, Jake and I have been bantering about Star Wars 5e, uh, some version of a modified Star Wars system, just because yeah. the D6 has been a bit hack. Right. So, yeah, man, there's a fucking lot of If anyone of games. out there knows a good system for yeah. Star Wars, let us know. <laughs> we don't there's reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And I hate the yeah. fantasy flight one. It's ugh. garbage. Yeah. Scum and Villainy would be good. It's just a lot of the what the world is for Scum and Villainy is kind of built into the rules. Mm. So you'd have to like extract some of it. But I don't think it would be that hard to, to mod it. Yeah. And then there's there's Starfinder. There's the other D20 Star Wars version. Mm-hmm. There's a lot out there. But I, I definitely got the Star Wars bug, too. Yeah. yeah. Been thinking about that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I know, I mean, I think the response that we got back in that survey we did, I mean, our audience largely loves Star Wars. I mean, as do a lot of people. So um, for Ryan, Matt, Dan, I mean, it, games you might have mine running, but otherwise, what kind of games you want to play in either stuff we've mentioned right now or other stuff, genre, systems, anything? Like, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys fired up about doing the next year? Um, I think... In terms of actual campaigns running wise, I don't know how well it'll work with our timetable and schedule, but I have another D and D five V ID idea for our homebrew uh, setting in Regnum, uh, and it'll have a lot to do with kind of the inconsistency of magic, and we've talked a lot about that kind of off the podcast um, about some ideas we have for the setting. I think would be pretty interesting, but outside of that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing some vampire again. Uh, as we said, that was our go-to for summers yeah. of, yeah. of uh, our lives. So, and the mythical, the unattainable shadow run. No, <laughs> the, don't say those. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying the Scottish play. You can't say shadow run. Yeah. <laughs> At a role playing table. We have talked about shadow. I mean, I can remember, Hayden with the shadow run book and I, what well, we must've been like 10, 11 years old at is that point. Is there one on the wall there. there uh, that's probably his. Um, <laughs> and I remember thumbing through it so many times trying to play it at least two or three, even going as so far as making characters, but never, never getting there. I mean, mm. my sister was extolling the virtues of cyberpunk and she thinks it's really, really fun to play. So. Yeah. I don't know if she's playing the old version or or the new new one. That I picked just came up. Out. I picked up Cyberpunk Red. It's yeah. a gorgeous book. Yeah. It's a lot of rules, yeah. but it's a pretty book. So Shadowrun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Cyberpunk is more classic Cyberpunk. Sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Shadowrun adds that fantasy element, yeah, the magic, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, to yeah. It, dragons right? and stuff. I, yeah. I actually, um, I've been thinking about Cyberpunk a little bit lately too because I I've been rereading Snow Crash, mm. which is kind of like the grandfather of of Cyberpunk. Yeah. at this point, it came out in '92, so <laughs> you know, a lot of guesses in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah Snow Crash. Although, great. fun fun fact in Snow Crash, they call it the metaverse. 
They, Wait, uh, it's there you go. straight up. He straight up stole the the term metaverse from from Snow Crash. Yeah, <clears throat> thirty years later, what a fucking innovator! <laughs> <laughs> is is that why the graphics are like thirty years behind too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, what do you want to play? They're coming after me now, um, man. I, yeah, I'll, a lot of that sounds good. Um, I d- I do. Uh, it'd be nice to to get get into a vampire game. Yeah, I, d- I do remember our uh, our our. Days in uh, old Chicago town. Mm. Um, Chicago by night. Chicago by night, cruising around. Um, I've had a character in mind for your World War II game for literally 20 years now, I think. About <laughs> Belgian almost. guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've had that guy like, in, yeah, in mind for, for a while. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm up for I'm up for just about anything. Some, uh, some fucking like you I w- know. Yeah, I mean, I know I, I was disappointed when John, um, you know, jumped ahead 20 years of this game because I was I was really psyched about Zeppelins, but you know, <laughs> um, not so not so much yeah, rolling there. I, yeah. John Zeppelin says pilot. I want fighter pilots, yeah. and Ryan says yeah. I want a Zeppelin. Zeppelin. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> Zeppelin. Yeah, that's far for the course. <laughs> I'll throw a balloon. I'll throw an observation balloon nice. in there. Don't worry. <laughs> What do you do? I I watch. I watch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, are you guys turned? Okay, I'm I'm gonna turn now. <laughs> I burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, uh, let's see. I I mean, I'm excited about the monster of the week because uh, that's gonna combine two things that I really love: food and monsters. Uh, <laughs> so that's fun. Um, I'm excited about the Delta Green after the recent Session Zero that we did. I think that's going to be a lot of fun with those characters. Uh, and I know I've just run a 38-plus episode adventure, but I also have uh, an idea. I don't know what system, maybe Dungeon World, something that's less work for me, I think would be a <laughs> lot more fun. Uh, but Can I play an elephant again? <laughs> Possibly, kind of yes. depends on where we go. But I always, I always thought it'd be fun to run a a story based off the premises of flat Earth and using like pre made like flat world Earth. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, use those the truth websites uh, and really spell it out for the people who don't understand that the Earth is in fact flat and there are ice walls. So, so in, in, in wait, game prep would just be reading those hold on. deep subreddit when, boards. Wait, yes. do you mean like this would be like a modern day game where like flat earthers are right? No, I think fantasy, no. right? Uh, I <laughs> see. That's just it. Not not necessarily modern day, but maybe like steampunk era. Ooh, like yeah. oh, flight has cool, just kind cool. of come around, so you could get to the ice wall, but you could never like get over it. You, you had not. me at steampunk. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm in. You know, I'm, I don't want I'm a descendant of the turtle. If that, I can play a crazy yeah, turtle <laughs> steam <laughs> engineer, I'm in. Terry Pratchett. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got that might I've be got a good dungeon ideas. world. That might be a good dungeon world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Source source book for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. I've been reading a little bit up on it, poking around at the Reddit boards for Dungeon World as well. So. I think it could be a lot of fun, but I'm very far away from putting sounds, any actual Sounds like we have to be to really it. high, though, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you'll have to get really high, yeah. <laughs> I forget how high the ice walls are, but, you know, a couple miles at least. <laughs> so I, I just was listening to a, a, a actual play podcast where they have a system where you can give them, like, $5. And for every $5 you give them, they literally all take a shot. During the game. Oh my lord. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Let, getting into I'm, the next part. Yeah. <laughs> Fun racing. <Yeah. laughs> um, that does actually the other the only other thing I I kind of wanted to mention was um just the idea of other kinds of content. I know we put the the question in that in that survey that a lot of you guys did and again really appreciate the feedback of you know if we ended up doing some kind of regular bonus material stuff you'd want to hear. Um, I know I have a blast doing the game master round tables. Mm-hmm. They're fun. They're easy. They really get my juices flowing. They're Sexual. easy to edit, yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> awesome. Um, and it was cool. Uh, it was cool having a guest on and that's a great format. You know, if the thing that we are worst at, I think not like the podcast is perfect, whatever, but I'm happy with the product, but we are so fucking bad at like social media and engaging other stuff 
And if we, um, you know, I don't want that to be our bread and butter, but if we end up getting a little bit more involved in the community and having, you know, guests on, you know, n- never being the main thing, the main thing is always going to be us playing games, Yeah. but have that, um, you know, it's a way to reach new, new ears and, um, get new voices. You know, we, we all have pretty similar experience for the most part. So it's a cool way to hear new things. And then, uh, you know, beyond that, I mean, We're, we are going to have to do at least one movie review that I can think of. A movie, the movie, the movie review. Thing review. Be fun. Yeah. yeah, there's going to be D and D the movie. Oh, oh yeah, we do. So we one hundred percent. We have to go to it. Yeah, we do. We have to go to it and then review it. One hundred percent immediately after. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I may have to make a trip down for that. <laughs> Hell yeah, I did. I did like the having the guests on the on the round table, and and I would add like you know if anyone has any suggestions for any other people that might be a, be a good fit to, to join. Let us know. Yeah. If anyone like happens to by chance, know Deborah Ann wall and want to like invite <laughs> <Yeah>. her on <laughs> or Joe, uh, Maglioni there. Yeah. 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 Magic Mike. <laughs> Vin Diesel. Vin Wait, Diesel. Vin, 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 yeah. Yeah. Tatum on here? <laughs> Can we, yeah. No, no, he, no, oh. the other guy actually plays D and D. If we have magic Mike on here, we need a Twitch stream <laughs> or Henry Cavill. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. if, if any of you are listening, just mm-hmm. drop us an email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, if you do a podcast, if you know somebody does that, if you listen to another podcast that you think would be a cool, you know, fit to hear a voice crossover, um, that'd be great. I mean, at some point, so we're playing, in our studio, which is in our business that we own, <laughs> that we are occupying space in that mm-hmm. at some point should probably turn into a profitable space <laughs> uh, in escape room, which is what the business is. Um, at some point, this podcast will have to relocate. Um, and I think when we, you know, it's a great studio setup. I think for a first run, uh, I have ideas about how we'd make it better, having a better clear open table. You know, that's stuff for us. But if we're going to do it, I would I would go add the video. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. sure. fuck it. You know, yeah. if, if we're going to design it from the ground up, if that's a thing that some people are into, then why not? You know, we can do strip teases. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> different kind of shit like Shots that. We would need to put on clothes to do strip teases, though. Well. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. It is hot in here. Yeah. It would be the reverse. Yeah, we'd, private we'd show, clothes though. On. I don't want yeah. anybody to see, get to see what Pe- I see. There it is. People would pay us to put our clothes back on. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I have no problem exploiting any of you sexually for personal gain. <laughs> you roll roll a D8 luck, to pick a player. Roll a D12 to pick a sex act. Roll a D6 to do that act to another Who player. Who has the book? Who has the book? <laughs> but, you know, as much as I, it's not like our, our main thing, um, dungeon crawls, but uh, I would love to at some point have some cameras and do a cool dungeon crawl where we have like awesome looking minis and stuff. On the yeah. Table. With yeah. the fact that yeah. we have like, we have a lot of minis at our disposal, yeah, very talented um, mini, but if we could get, you know, like we could get Matt to come down in person for a weekend and, and set up an awesome table and, and like fucking live stream it on Twitch and YouTube and everything. That'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. 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 All right. What else? Anything we missed? Any, anything else anybody wants to throw out there? I'm trying to think of anyone got any highlights of the year? Yeah, or, or or up to now. What's what's everybody's favorite arc that you were in uh, as a player? Cut the cut the DM side out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say Star Wars was probably my favorite to play in. Um, just that that like, I, I I don't get to I didn't get to play a lot of Star Wars um, with you guys growing up. Um, so just being able to actually get into that D six because I I've actually I ran a D six game a long time ago. I converted it, and it was fun to fun to get into actual Star Wars D six. Cool. Anybody else? Um, for for me, it's been the choose your own adventures. Like I said, I've just been really digging those. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know what my favorite <laughs> game is. <laughs> your favorite game is the one nobody's heard yet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The one Listen. that after we're done with this recording, we are we'll probably never. going to party wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The one yeah. that might be episode thirty nine. It, might, it might end tonight. <laughs> yeah. It might end tonight. Uh, mm. I'm trying to think because you know there's there's pieces from all of them, but there yeah, you're was... an asshole because you've been in every one of them. Yeah. No, no, I wasn't in the first one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think John and I are th- and the Matt. Own... Yeah, John, yeah. Matt, and I have been in a, every main arc. Yeah, main arc. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I th- I think there's just some there's some great great moments <laughs> that I always laugh about in Star Wars. Um, 
just playing the good bad bad good guy, good good bad <laughs> the guy. Anti villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um I think I had a lot of fun. I really liked your character in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially yeah, towards great. the end of, of, of that campaign. <laughs> it was just, you know, almost every uh episode was was uh I knew I was gonna have some fun. So cool. Yeah. I think for me it was Probably vampire playing Monsieur Benton Beauclair. Mm. I still walk around my apartment talking, <laughs> talking in that voice every once in a while. I'm sure, Sarah loves it. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes she's Does like, that, uh, like into the uh, for, for whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that link into the uh, the old <laughs> bedroom. You're role playing to the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's method, man. Do you want to feel some voodoo? <laughs> oh. Voodoo <Wow>. magic, man. <laughs> Um, I think, I mean, my favorite player experience might have been Into the Storm. Um, I'd never played Dungeon World. It was so fun and easy. And I love that character, that silly fucking yeah, character that I didn't even really, I didn't want to understand exactly what he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody says, like, what was his deal? What was his thing? No. I was like, I don't know. He was kind of like a nature spirit. He didn't really know. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it was just like, it just felt like an easy, natural fit. I love his dynamic with Matt's character. Um, it just felt like it was just there from the beginning with without any kind of background to it. Um, and That's it was, the best, when a character feels effortless. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, personally, it was also kind of like a relief of like finishing the first arc that I ran and then just like fucking drop the pack. <laughs> 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 just like, I'm going to play and be goofy and have fun. So, word up. Cool. All right. Um, I guess the the only other thing I want to add, um, thanks for listening as always, guys. Thanks for being here. Whether you just got on board, you've been here from day one. Um, every, I mean, if you, just, if you just subscribe and you listen to every episode, that's fucking awesome. For those of you guys that get involved in our limited and, you know, fucking Sporadic. awkward <laughs> forays into social media, we really appreciate that. I, you know, it's the only reason I have any interest in social media is interacting with people that listen to this podcast, you know, answering the surveys, all that kind of shit, ideas that you guys throw out there, people that have reviewed, people that have told friends, people that have come on and been like, oh, my buddy told me about this. And, you know, I'll tell you, the podcast game is fucking hard. There are literally a million podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's very hard to be heard. And um, we're not going anywhere. We're going to keep making this podcast. But um, the, the way to do all this shit that we're talking about wanting to do. Um, we, we definitely need you guys. We need you guys to keep listening. We need you to talk about it, review it, post about it on shit, connect with us, give us ideas, give us feedback, tell us what you want to hear. Tell us who you want us to reach out to. Um, keep pushing. And eventually we're going to just keep reaching more ears and being able to do more stuff. And then, you know, the idea of doing a bonus feed that releases monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, um, eventually, I think could be uh, could be in the future, and you know, even tell us uh, if one of us sucks, and they'll just bow out with deep shame, <laughs> and, and, and then back. you can be on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So incentive. Yes, if you fight one of us in Mortal One on One, you take your place at the table. It's a, it's a Highlander thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ow, ow. All right. You can only beat seven. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it, right? Is that, is yep. that where Dean went? Did, that's it. Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was uh, Devin, ki- Devin killed me. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, All right. Well, th- yeah, just to jump on that. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah, thanks. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Happy 2023. Happy 2023. Look for a calendar drop. It's in your <laughs> Twitterless <laughs> universe. <laughs> calendar drop coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later, fuckers. Police yeah. car and a screaming siren. Pneumatic drill, gripped up concrete. A baby wailing, straight out howling. A screech of brakes, lap lights blinking. That's entertainment. That's entertainment. Smash a glass, little rumble of boots. Mmm, that's nasty.